Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. You know, I've been canning a lot lately. And as the years pile on, and they are piling on, I t find myself looking for ways to save wear and tear on my back. So I thought of this little hack to save my back and thought I'd share it with you. Now, this is my all-American canner and I canned some applesauce in here, used it as a water bath, so it has more water than I would normally have for pressure canning. But even with a little bit of water you use for pressure canning, it's heavy. It's pretty heavy with no water, but when you add water, it gets really heavy. And I'm pretty sure that whoever designed my kitchen didn't do much work in it because the sink is across the kitchen from the stove. So here I have some half inch plastic tubing. It's a much longer piece than I need, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Because to do this hack, you want your tubing to be as short as it can be and still get the job done. And I'm going to show you getting the job done. Now first, I'm going to take the rack out of the bottom because I want to get all the water out of this canner. Quick note, you may leave the water in your canner between loads, but don't leave it overnight because I promise you, in the summertime, that can mean mold pretty quickly. So what I'm showing you here is my outside garden bucket, and I've got it sitting in a chair. And my goal here is to move the water from the canner to the bucket without picking up the canner. Okay, so I have trimmed my hose to be the proper length to go from the canner to the bucket. When you place your bucket, it has to be lower than the canner because the old rule is that water seeks its own level. So on one end of this hose, I'm going to keep it covered with my thumb and then I'm going to dip the other end into the water and let the whole thing fill up with water. There's another way to do this, by the way. You can put the one end in and suck the liquid up to the other end, but I don't want a mouthful of canning water. So I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to just hold one end and dip the other end in the water until I get the hose full of water. And this is why you want your hose to be as short as possible. You can see where the water is on this hose. Now I'm going to put my finger on the other end and lower it into the bucket. Let both thumbs go and it will start siphoning. It's kind of hard to show you all this with my camera in my hand and holding a hose on both ends. But there you go. The water is moving from the canner to the bucket without me picking up the canner. Now, when I come back up here, I'm going to try to hold the hose in place and lift the canner up on one side to make all the water run to one side. You won't see all this because my camera capabilities are just not what they ought to be. But it runs pretty quickly. And I use a half inch hose specifically because it's, it's easier to hold my thumbs on the end to fill it up. Okay, so let me do a little shift in here so I can show you this part where I lift the side of the canner. Got to switch hands. And I'm just tilting it a little bit. I'll share with you the reason I thought to do this was because I used to raise tropical fish and every week I had to take out a third of the water and put a third fresh water back in and this was how I took the water out. So we're done. I'm going to let this run down into the bucket, put my hose away. So now I'm just going to wipe it dry if it hadn't been raining for three days, I would throw that water into my garden. And picking up a bucket is so much easier on your back. So I hope this little tip, this little hack, helps you 
and you're back. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. Hope to see you again tomorrow.